Hey, welcome back. Exciting news. I heard from Bernard Tregon from CNRS, the Centre of Scientific Research here in France, who answered the question, why is there a place on Mars called Sirac en Perigord, the name of my village? And it's kind of complex, but really interesting. So this is the Curiosity rover. A mission like Curiosity took years of planning and they really carefully chose the sites that the rover could drive along and look at. Of course, the big mission for anything on Mars is to look for life. And one of the most possible sources of life on Mars would be water. Now, water did exist on Mars. We've seen riverbeds and lots of evidence of deep water, oceans even on Mars. And there is still water at the poles. But most of Mars's water left the planet millions of years ago. And what exactly was that process? Well, Mars is kind of cold and had a bit of an atmosphere, but the atmosphere got eroded, literally sanded off by high energy particles from the sun that stripped the oxygen and the hydrogen in the atmosphere, broke it up. Now, hydrogen is really interesting. When you break up water vapor and liberate hydrogen, hydrogen is so small. Now, listen, this is just a fantastic fact. Hydrogen is the smallest atom in existence. And when it's liberated, it reaches escape velocity on Earth and just goes straight out through the atmosphere and keeps going. It's unbelievably small and fast. It's faster than any rocket. So any if you ever let hydrogen off from a bottle on the surface of Earth or on Mars, it just goes whoop straight up through the atmosphere and out into deep space. It doesn't even be contained in the gravity of Earth or Mars. It just goes. And so that's what happened to the Martian atmosphere. And when it evaporated, eroded, water just couldn't exist at that low pressure. It effectively boiled away, possibly millions of years ago. But today there's evidence of ancient rivers and seas, sedimentary rocks and clays laid down by these ancient oceans, which have long gone. And that's what Curiosity was planned to go and look at. So the little guy doesn't drive around randomly. Every single day, every stop it makes was carefully planned in advance and named. And that's the important point. They planned their route and they gave this area of Mars the same name as our area in France because from satellite pictures, it had the clays uh, and sedimentary rocks of an ancient ocean, just as we do. This area around here is all clay and limestone laid down millions of years ago by a now evaporated sea, the same on Mars. So the Dordogne, Southwest France region, was chosen as an analogy, as a naming process for the Curiosity mission. Supposedly, it really helps the scientists to name a rock or a region after something on Earth so they can go, oh yeah, we found this at Sirac on Perigord or Brantom or wherever it was. So they know what they're talking about. And that's been the tradition of NASA and JPL on all these Mars missions. So Dordogne, our county, our area of France is a part of Mars. So that's the first reason. And that's why there's so many French village names on Curiosity's track over the red planet. But there's a second and really fascinating thing that Bernard from CNRS has told me. And that's this stuff, nontronite. Literally, I had never heard of nontronite. It's a clay-based mineral laid down by ancient oceans and also contains some of the minerals from the creatures that lived in the sea. A bit like flint. Well, nontronite is heavy in iron. 
and it's named after the village of Nontron. Nontron is just north of our village and was the place in 1827 that Pierre Berthier found Nontronite and named it after Nontron, the nearest village to his discovery. And Bernard goes into great detail and explains that Nontronite really doesn't have much commercial value. I'd be interested to know if Nontron ever had a Nontronite commercial industry, a mining industry for this clay-based, iron-rich mineral. But let's talk about how it can be used. Today, there is actually one Nontronite mine in the world, and it's here in New Zealand. And no doubt they make money from it because it's used to coat paper. Who's ever had a piece of paper that's slightly shiny or smooth? Well, that's a clay-based mineral that's coated on the paper to make it special and to add value. And it turns out that the best mineral to coat paper is nontronite. And it's all coming at present from New Zealand. And here's a funny story. When we first moved here, we noticed that you get a lot of publicity adverts in your mailbox, usually every Monday or Tuesday. We actually like them because it actually teaches us some French and we know what's for sale in the local stores or when there's a sale on. And then when we don't want them, we light the fire with them. But I discovered something really odd. When you go and try and burn this coated paper with nontronite, it's really rubbish to light a fire with. And we've heard that from our French neighbors who hate the publicity, the poop, and they hate the paper it's printed on because they can't even use it to light a fire. And we heard that. And I can confirm it's true, but in fact, it's true for a good purpose. It's actually a fire retardant coating because it's clay a kind of clay mineral which is coated to make the paper slightly shiny, smooth and fire retardant. And that's what they found on Mars, sedimentary rocks with nontronite. So it was perfectly named after our region in France. I guess the truth is on Mars.